Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Hana Bin Shabbat. Hana. I thought perhaps we could begin first by defining for our listeners, young and old, who are Gen Z and how they're different from the millennials, from the Gen Xers, and from my generation. I'm at the very, very end of baby boomers. Sure. Let's first define Gen Z is everyone who was born from 1998 to 2016. And they are distinct in, I would say, three or four aspects. The first one is diversity. With 48% minorities, Gen Z is the most diverse generation to ever live in this country. But I think it's important to understand that diversity is not just a demographic statistic or a data point about this generation. It is a cultural lens through which they view the world and something that they bring as an as expectation when they join the workforce or where they deal with one. So that's one thing. The second thing is obvious is the technology. Gen Z is the most digitally connected generation. 87% of Gen Z had access to cell phone before they were 15 years old. And that's, of course, affected every aspect of their lives, how they learn, how they process information, how they interact with one another, how they form relationships, and how they and what they expect also from, from future employers. So that's uh, that's I would say these are the two main. The third thing I would say about Gen Z is that, you know, I always say that Gen Zers are the kids of the recession and the graduates of the global pandemic. And as such, they really experienced two major events that shaped their lives and shaped their attitudes towards money. And that's, again, something that really affects how they view future jobs, uh, how they going, you know, that's fully committed to secure their financial future. And that is a very fundamental uh, aspect of who they are. And the last thing, which is a result of the connectivity, is when you are connected constantly through your phone and social media, you experience the world and world event in a very visceral way, which is very different than what you and I have experienced. We saw something on TV one day and it was over and we knew that something did happen, but we didn't live it 24-7 like they live today. And I think that exposure um, is driving them to ask questions and to wonder why so many issues that persisted for years are still on the table. Look just what happening today. And it's something that not only driving them to ask questions, but also driving them to take action. And that's what we see with a lot of Gen Zers, you know, driving big movements. I guess the, the most well-known is the climate change movement with Greta Thunberg. But there are a lot of grant work that is done in communi- at community level, at school level, of kids who really want to change the world and make the world a better place. And they are very committed to ask the question and drive change. So I would say these are the main identifying characteristics of this generation. 
Thank you so much. And we should also add that, and I got this data point from your book, that there are about 78 million Gen Mm -hmm. Zers. That makes up about 25% of the U.S. population today. And we're doing this interview at the very beginning of May 2022. How did that's you right? And by the way, I would, if you want to add the the size of the generation globally, we have 2.5 billion Gen Zers, so they are one third of the world population. So it's truly a big power. That's stunning. That really is stunning. How did you get really interested in researching this cohort? Yeah, so it's kind of, it, I would say it was a, a bit of a journey to get to get to this point. As you mentioned in the opening for the podcast, I spent 20 years as a management consultant and I started my career when, we, when millennials started to come on board. And I saw many of my clients truly struggling to understand the millennials. The millennials did not fit the mold of what was thought to be a good employee or they didn't follow the life stage patterns that, you know, marketing people used to think about. You know, you get married at a certain age, you buy a house at a certain age. And millennials came and just kind of broke all these assumptions that people had about behaviors and what young people are doing or wanting. And there were so many trial and errors, trying to figure out how to fit them in the workplace, how to create the right programs. And I would say that even till today, some organizations are still struggling to understand millennials. And so many opportunities were lost because of that lack of understanding of the generation. And as we got to the beginning of Gen Z coming of age, I thought we have a really important uh, opportunity here to get things right this time with Generation Z and and just help companies and an organization to think differently on this new generation and be open to the changes that they bring instead of trying to fit them into an existing mold and hope that it's going to work because it won't. Well, speaking of existing molds, there was another part to my earlier question that I forgot to follow up on. And Uh that was, so how does Gen Z differ Mm -hmm. from millennials, from Gen Xers and baby boomers? I think there there is one thing which is just context. And I believe that previous generation had lived in a much stable world than it is today. Because if you just see how many things Gen Zers have to deal with since they were born in 1998 until today, it's actually stunning. Usually we define a generation as a group of people who experience one or two major big events, like it's the Vietnam War or it's Berlin Wall collapse or it's September 11. But with Gen Z, it's just like the list is just going on and on. Global recession, global pandemic, okay, gun, uh, gun violence in schools, and you know, s- uh, some landmark uh, elections uh, is, is since 98 till 2020. So all these things are affecting their psyche just in a very different way than, and give them a sense of change is the only constant. There is no stability. So just by virtue of the context, there is a big difference. I think the other thing which I see a big difference is how they react to what's happening around them, to the world around them. And especially when we compare to millennials. Millennials, they came out of college, they experienced the, you know, the challenges of having a huge student loan. And their reaction was, okay, we have to be careful. I'm going to go back and live with my parents. I am not going to put my money in stock market. In fact, there was a study that just came out a couple of years ago that shows that millennials keep most of their money in cash. They are afraid to invest because they are afraid of this catastrophic event that's going to wipe out their savings. So they were more risk averse, more cautious about starting a, a committee to adult lives. And I think with Gen Z, we see almost the opposite. They are more willing to take risks. They are more willing to think, oh, I want to secure my, my financial future. Therefore, I need to find a pathway to own a home. I need to find a pathway to get, to get these kind of jobs. And you didn't see that with the millennial. I mean, many Gen Zers right now, before, because the pandemic, are back with their parents. But 
they will go out the minute they have the feeling that they got a secure job and they can they can go and do that. So I think it's more kind of how you react to things is is one major aspect of them. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of t for c And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.